This is so fun. You guys are uh, you guys are listening. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Everyone's on their phones, but you guys are listening. I had to pay a therapist a hundred dollars to listen to me. <laughs> you could probably get a blowjob for fifty dollars. <laughs> You know anytime you're talking to your therapist, he's just thinking the whole time, man, I wish I could just suck two dicks and get out of here. <laughs> daddy wanted me to seem more American, I was like, Dad, they're gonna know. <laughs> like, I guess he wants me to sneak in undercover as a white person. <laughs> I love beef. Mm. Mm, cows are not sacred at all. People always ask me, they're like, uh, are you really Indian? Really? I'm like, yes, look. Look how close I can stand to you without feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> Some of you guys have stood in lunch lines with Indian people. <laughs> It's like, dude, I'm just trying to get some like salad here. Take your dick out of my ass. <laughs> I'm not, like, I'm progressive, but it's you know it's lunchtime. <laughs> oh man, it's like uh, my family is Hindu. Uh, it's the oldest religion in the world. We have thousands of gods. Each god has one job. It's like a well-run company, you know. Like I don't want to knock Christianity, but. It's one guy and 12 employees. <laughs> it's got a startup vibe. <laughs> In Hinduism, like, what, every god just has one job. Like, we have a god of the sunrise. Like, not the sun, just the sunrise. This guy works 30 minutes in the morning, he's like, I'm done. <laughs> People are like, dude, what about the sunset? He's like, nah, not my job. <laughs> if you want that shit to come back down, go two cubicles down, talk to Sars. <laughs> Jesus is handling too much stuff. Whether wars, morality, prayers. You can't pray to Jesus. That's like asking Mark Zuckerberg to reset your Facebook password. <laughs> guy's busy. <laughs> This guy came up to me in the street over here and he was like, Jesus loves you. When that happened, I felt like a, like a girl in middle school. I was like, oh my God, really? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, isn't he a big deal? <laughs> like, Why couldn't he tell me himself? I smoke weed to deal with all the stress. I told my dad I smoke weed because it makes food taste twice as good, and therefore you're getting double the value. <laughs> so my dad is like a cheap Indian dad. You should have seen the conflict on his face. <laughs> he was being torn apart from the inside. <laughs> I know that drugs are bad, but God, I love deals. <laughs> this happened to me recently. I was walking out my front door, and there was a guy walking by, and he goes, Hey man, do you want a blowjob? And I was like, No, dude. Like, Not if you're going to be walking while you're offering it. <laughs> Like, how much does this mean to you? <laughs> so are you like, like a paper boy just throwing newspapers? <laughs> I told 
told my friend about this story and he goes, man, it sounds like you live in a really dangerous area. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I ever felt like I was in danger. <laughs> I'm being offered a blowjob. <laughs> If anything, this feels like an amenity. <laughs> like, hey, do you live in a good area of town? Uh, do they offer blowjobs? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like people. There's no good good information about sex. It's like, okay, think in the fifth grade, I took sex education. They taught us everything about sex except how to get sex. I was like, what? This is the only thing I need to know. Because otherwise, what is the class? Like, we're just learning theory? Just like, uh, hypothetically, you see, uh, uh, if you were to find a vagina, uh, you could hypothetically uh, put your genitals inside of it. Uh, uh, the only thing that's actually locating the vagina is a uh, very complicated. <laughs> uh, we will not be covered in this class. <laughs> I was like, dude, like, I need some useful information. Like, at one point the teacher goes, the penis is made up of dorsal veins and spongy tissue. I was like, are you teaching me how to build a penis? Wow, dude, thank you for this architectural knowledge. Oh my god, this class was so bad. Like, okay, at one point this kid raises, it was a, it, we had a Q&A. This kid raises his hand and he goes, teacher, uh, what's a dildo? <laughs> <laughs> my teacher goes, oh, a dildo and a penis are the same thing. <laughs> From then on, me and my friends were just like bragging about how big our dildos were. <laughs> I didn't know that a dildo wasn't a penis until sophomore year of college. Yeah. Until I went back to this girl's dorm room and she was flirting with me and she was like, hey, guess what? I have a dildo. I was just like, eh. I guess that makes two of us. <laughs> I was in bed recently with a woman and she was like, go harder. So I did, and then I just came right away. <laughs> disappointed in. She was like, what? That's it? I was like, yes, that's it. Yes. If I drive 100 miles an hour to the supermarket, I'm going to get there in 30 seconds. you gotta be a little easier on the guys. Because the, uh, the expectations for men in the bedroom, it's like unrealistic. I mean, like it's, and all these expectations are in our society, you know what I mean? Like uh, anytime that Lionel Richie song comes on the radio, you know the one where he's like, uh, all night long, all night. <laughs> I'm just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> What the fuck? Like, you care so much about duration. Like, where's the verse where you talk about quality? <laughs>
Lionel, you can't come in later with like a different verse, you know? Like, fast but good. <laughs> So fast. <laughs> I'm like, that's something I can get down to, you know? I tried taking antidepressants, but I don't know if you guys have noticed, like, they make you really happy, but your dick doesn't work anymore. So you're just smiling while, like, stuffing your flaccid dick into a woman's vagina. <laughs> just like a magician making a napkin disappear, you know? Like, I'm doing these old man things. So I was writing Muni, and then I was watching this kid, and he had his phone out, and he had, like, hundreds and hundreds of apps on his phone. And I just turned into an old man. I was like, back in my day, we did not have so many apps. I remember back when the iPhone first came out, you had maybe three or four apps. There was one app, uh, you, you shake your phone, it makes lightsaber noises. Very good app. And there was another app, I uh, had a lot of birds, uh, they were very angry. I, I cut my hair short so that like it's not so noticeable, you know what I mean? Like. Isn't that weird? Like, if you're losing your hair, you cut it short so people don't notice? Like, that doesn't work with anything else, you know? Like, if you have a small dick, you can't cut half of it off. <laughs> like, yo, look how thick I am. <laughs> oh, man. Every morning I wake up with an erection. It's called morning wood, it's a normal thing. Uh, I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? It's like, am I supposed to text somebody like, hey, you up? She's like, yeah, I'm at Starbucks, I've been waiting 15 minutes. Then, if I have a girl at my place late at night, I have trouble getting it up. But I have no problem getting rock hard in the morning for a bowl of Cheerios. Must be all the tiny little holes. <laughs> some people, they don't, some people don't use condoms. They just do the pull-out method. I like the pull-out method. Like, you're missing the best part. <laughs> I mean, like, what the, like, you, so you just have sex and then you take it out and then that's it? Just, okay, so you're in. Like, would you go to a movie and then, like, 15 minutes before the movie's over, just leave and read on Wikipedia? <laughs> no, stay in the movie. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I only watch porn on Safari. <laughs> Look, here's the reason, okay? So, I do all my work on Chrome, and then I watch all porn on Safari. So that way, like, if I'm doing work, porn doesn't just show up. <laughs> okay? So there's actually a reason here. But if somebody looked at my, like, Safari browsing history, they would be like, doesn't this guy know you can do other things on the internet? <laughs> it's just, doesn't he ever need directions somewhere? <laughs> you, you know, I think the issue with uh, dating is, like, it's not, like, about finding love. It's more like, how skillful are you at dating? You know what I mean? Dating is just like a game, you know? Like you try all these things, you do it a bunch, wrong a bunch of times, then finally you get the right combination and boom, you're in, you know? 
Like anytime you see a guy go up to a girl like, ah, oh, you look beautiful, what's your name? And it works? You have to imagine, that guy once previously went up to a girl like, Booga, hey, hey. <laughs> I have a pet snake. It's like, oh, that didn't work at all. The next time I won't mention the pet snake. I don't even, you know, like, I don't even know how it works. Like, anytime a, a girl I find attractive walks by, like, I just stand up straight. <laughs> Like, as if that's gonna make any difference, you know? Like, as if I was undateable like this. <laughs> but now. Like, I don't even know what's going on, you know? Like, I think my brain's like, hot girl approaching. My body's like, let me see what I can do. <laughs> It's very short notice. <laughs> what else was I reading about? I, I, I saw uh, with the Google self-driving car, they're trying to figure out what the car is supposed to do when the car is about to hit somebody. They're wondering, should the car hit the person? Or should the car swerve wildly, killing you? Like, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I think maybe Google's gonna introduce different packages. <laughs> They'll be the cheap, basic, you know, kill yourself package. And then the really expensive, screw the world package. <laughs> the thing is, I can just see the situation, you know, where like, I'm in the car, like, you know, I'm, a, I'm about to hit somebody. And I have to turn and make eye contact with my wife. And when she sees the look in my eyes, she knows I didn't pay for the upgrade. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> and then, okay, so then uh, this other guy, he was, he was driving this Tesla and then it was making fake engine noises. There's an app now in the Tesla that makes fake engine noises. Yeah, because people said it wasn't fun to drive without it. Like, do you guys think when bicycles were first invented, do you think people were like, uh, yeah, this is really cool, but um, I just don't hear the galloping. <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm hitting the brake right now, but it's not going <laughs> the way that I'm used to, I don't know. I, I was in the South recently. Why do they do Civil War reenactments in the South? It's like, you guys lost. Why do you want to relive this? <laughs> you know what I mean? What if I was like, uh, you know what today is? It's the anniversary of my wife cheating on me. <laughs> Let's reenact it. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> you know, like, like, I don't know who's gonna cure cancer, but like, whoever it is, you know, they better be bald. <laughs> Right? I'm just gonna be really upset if some guy just walks out on television like, you know, <laughs> cured it. <laughs> like, uh, my friend was asking me recently, he's like, hey, do you trust somebody who has a neck tattoo? And I was like, I don't, I'm like, it depends on context, I think. You know, like, if you're just hanging out or having a drink, I think it's fine. But like, if I'm at a hospital and you're about to operate on me, <laughs> I kind of want to know why it says MS-13 on your face. <laughs> right? You know? Like, excuse me, sir, did you work at Microsoft in 2013? <laughs> <laughs> it's so expensive. You know, like, having expensive stuff really stresses me out. Because, like, if you have something expensive, like, you can lose it, and then it's, you have to feel bad about it, right? Like, anytime I read the wash labels on expensive clothes, like, I just get so overwhelmed. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, cold water only, hang dry, hand wash, do not iron, do not bleach, do not steam, wash only on a full moon, drink black history. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Like, am I washing clothes or am I like operating on a premature newborn panda? Like... <laughs> and I'm like, what? Do not steam? Like, really? The, these clothes can't handle steam? <laughs> like, so if I'm out and I see fog in the distance? <laughs> that's it? Just. just like... Guys, I mean, I wish you could stay for another drink, but um, my like, pants are gonna disintegrate in 20 minutes. <laughs> Gotta go, bye. <laughs> yes. I love this city, though. Uh, like, California in general, so progressive, you know what I mean? Like, I can use any bathroom that I want to. I always use the women's. It's just so much cleaner. <laughs> so much cleaner. And if I walk out of the women's and someone looks at me weird, I just go, hey! You don't know my story. <laughs> don't ask questions. <laughs> like, some places are not so progressive. Like, I was at McDonald's and they had a sign on the bathroom that said, customers only. I was like, oh, how binary of you. <laughs> oh, you're either a customer or you're not. <laughs> What about me? I'm still deciding. <laughs> I spend like all day on the internet these days and like, so I called Comcast and I was like, hey, can I get my internet upgraded to the next fastest internet? And the guy goes, but sir, your internet is already so fast. <laughs> Just like upgrade me to the next fastest. He goes, but sir, if you upgrade your internet any further, you're gonna have business speed internet. <laughs> and I, I felt terrible. Like I, I just felt so greedy. Like I had a moment, like you know, in a movie when you hear the character's inner dialogue, you know, like, oh my God, oh, what have I become? <laughs> I'm a single man living alone, requesting business speed internet for personal use. I've become a monster. <laughs> like, so I was like, listen man, I think living in San Francisco, like I've been seeing people buy $6 lattes, $15 cocktails, taking $70 Ubers. Like I think I just lost perspective. Thank you for setting me straight. You have a wonderful day. Yeah, and because uh, you have to admit that you're in the wrong when Comcast is refusing to sell you something. <laughs> you know you're evil. I was feeling insecure uh, recently because um, I was thinking about how Indian people don't have any cool martial arts. <laughs> I was smoking sativa <laughs> and started thinking real deep. I was like, oh man, like people stay up late watching Chinese movies, like kung fu movies, you know? Like nobody's up late watching an Indian movie about passive resistance. <laughs> you know, like, hey dude, can you uh, rewind that part where Gandhi didn't do anything? <laughs> I want to see it in slow motion where he goes, no. <laughs> it's just not exciting. <laughs> American movies are funny, right? So, uh, this is how happy, we're so happy in America that we watch sad movies for entertainment. <laughs> You know, there's people waking up in the morning like, what do I want to experience today? How about sadness? A new emotion. <laughs> I was thinking, like in India, there are no sad movies. You know what I mean? Every movie is just 
three hours of singing and dancing. <laughs> That's how bad their lives are. <laughs> Nobody in India comes home like, well, I just walked seven hours in the scorching heat to get water for my family. Uh, why don't we throw on Schindler's List? <laughs> just like, kick back and relax. <laughs> I think the only sad Indian movie is Slumdog Millionaire. <laughs> it's written and directed by white people. <laughs> White people are the only people that look at suffering and think, IMAX. <laughs> Oscars. <laughs> like, life is too easy in America, even for dogs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dogs used to have to walk on the ground. <laughs> Now they're just being carried in women's purses. Like a prince in a flying gondola. Just like, just like looking down on all the other dogs that still walk. His paw still touched the cement. No, oh, man. I'm so, yeah, but my life is so easy that I just, like, I... I find e ways to amuse myself. So I went on Fiverr.com and I saw that you could pay five dollars for a thousand likes on a post. And so, yeah, you guys are like, ooh. <laughs> All this time I've been calling my friends like, hey, can you like what I just posted? <laughs> so I mean, I tried it. The, the, the weird, okay, the only thing that was weird was that all the likes came from the Middle East. <laughs> So, so, I mean, this makes for a really good prank. <laughs> I mean, because the names are just like Mustafa Al-Farsad and stuff like that. So my friend posted, uh, excited for my flight to New York City next week. I immediately spent the best five dollars of my time uh, to just ruin her next 24 hours. I'm just telling you, that's how bored I am. And we're so, we're so happy, like, and people get upset at the smallest things. Like, I was at a restaurant with this girl and she, she ordered sweet potato fries, but they didn't have them. And she made this noise. It was, it sounded like a sad air horn. The waiter goes, no, we don't have sweet potato fries. And she goes, oh, 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 oh. He's like, you sound like a sad hype man. <laughs> oh, my life wasn't always super easy. I got bullied in high school. Um, no. Bully, no, it's okay. <laughs> Look at me now, I'm in a basement in the Tenderloin. <laughs> I showed, yeah. <laughs> Bullies were so dumb, they'd always be like, Learning is gay. Books are gay. <laughs> they were so afraid of learning and becoming gay. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like as if like you memorize the Bill of Rights and a man's penis just goes in your mouth. <laughs> they were so afraid. So anytime someone picked on me, I would just hit them with some knowledge. <laughs> Be like, hey, give me your lunch money. Be like, Ugh, did you know there's no solid ground on Jupiter? <laughs> This guy's like, oh no, I love dicks. Uh, <laughs> uh, people ask me if I'm gay a lot. <laughs> 
It's fine. I'm not gay. I just I'm like really feminine, <laughs> which I think is fine. I mean, like, what woman doesn't want to get finger banged by a guy who just got a manicure? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have long eyelashes. <laughs> women come up to me, they always compliment me, like, oh my god, you have the prettiest eyelashes. It's weird that a woman can compliment a man on a pretty feature, but you can't compliment her on a manly feature. <laughs> This girl told me, she was like, you have such pretty eyelashes. I was like, you have such broad shoulders. <laughs> you know, like, uh, getting rejected at a bar doesn't hurt, right? Because they don't know who you are. What hurts is, like, if someone gets to know you and then they reject you. Like, if somebody walks by your house and they're like, fuck this house. It's like, hey, you don't know anything about this house. But if they walk inside and they're like, oh, weird floor plan. <laughs> Uh, why do you have to go through the bathroom to get to the kitchen? <laughs> oh, I could never live here. <laughs> then it's like, oh, I can't change that. <laughs> Women, don't date a man with abs. <laughs> Fat is energy. <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying, right? Like, a man with abs is a tired, hungry man. He can't protect you in a fight. He, like, look, like, fat is fuel, right? Would you... Would you drive a car with no gas? No. Don't ride a man with abs. So sad, if you have fat hair, they call it a spare tire. You know what's awesome when your car is broken on the side of the road? Whenever people give you dating advice, they all say the same thing. They're like, listen, love will come when you're not looking. I'd love to tell that to someone who's dehydrated. <laughs> like, listen, water will come when you're not thirsty. Stop acting so parched. You're scaring the aquafina. <laughs> I, I used to be like so introverted like back in the day. Oh my God. Like, uh, dude, I couldn't even, like, talk to a girl at a bar. I'd go up to a girl, I'd be like... <laughs> like, like, I would start turning into, like, a pug that's having breathing problems, you know? Like, okay, hold up. Hi, I thought you were beautiful. I wanted to meet you. You can do this. Commitment turns me on. <laughs> That's what does it for me, man. Stability and inside jokes, I'm hard. <laughs> That's, That's the kind of dirty talk I like. Like, I'm gonna be here forever. <laughs> Leave your line of sight. <laughs> Sometimes people follow me on Twitter and then they go, hey, I followed you. Can you follow me back? I'm like, no, you're my follower. I don't follow my followers. Do you think Martin Luther King followed his followers? You think he gave the I have a dream speech and then asked everybody for pictures of their food? <laughs> yes. Other sad things are happening. I, uh, I recently took Greyhound from Sacramento to Bakersfield. <laughs> I know. Each word in that sentence is sadder than the previous one. 
so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part was when we got to Bakersfield, the driver comes over to the intercom and he goes, thank you for choosing Greyhound. I was like, dude, excuse me. I did not choose Greyhound. Okay, I made a series of poor life decisions, which led to a financial crisis, at which point Greyhound happened to me. <laughs> That's how you should use that word, by the way, is like a general term for disaster. <laughs> like, hey, how was your date last weekend? Oh, God, total Greyhound. <laughs> uh, so I was talking to this girl, and like we had like this awesome connection. I was like, dude, this girl is the shit. And then I saw her talking to another guy, and they had an amazing connection. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, this girl, she, she's she's like a like a quesadilla, you know, like, like. like <laughs> Everybody loves her, but to her, you're just a mouth. Ouch. Ouch, I know, it's a burn. Girl, you're like a quesadilla. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm driving, do you ever, I just like think, I, I could just turn into oncoming traffic right now. Just one movement. <laughs> like that. That's the same way I think about sucking dick. <laughs> Like, I could just suck this guy's dick right now. Just... <laughs> just... If I wanted to, just fucking put it in there. <laughs> but I've never done it. <laughs> but it would be real easy. <laughs> you don't seem like you're gonna move very fast. I just mean that you're like calm and collected, you know? You'd be like, oh, I guess it's, uh, it's wet now. <laughs> My life is so great in America. You know, like, I mean, I'm, I grew up middle class. I feel sad that I'm never gonna have a rags to riches story. You know what I mean? It's not possible. If there's ever a documentary about me, it'll be like, Richard grew up in an affluent neighborhood in the Bay Area. Despite having a setback of not getting into Yale <laughs> and being forced to be educated at UCLA, <laughs> he managed to achieve his dreams. <laughs> Do you guys know you have to be 5'10 to donate sperm? <laughs> This joke is over. <laughs> well, I'm on a new topic now. <laughs> That's crazy, man. 5'10". Mark Zuckerberg is 5'7". I'd love to see them turn him down. Listen, great work with Facebook. Connecting the world. Globalization, amazing. No one wants your short man juice. <laughs> <laughs> Bin Laden, 6'5", right this way, so. <laughs> uh, I was gonna go to India in February, uh, but at the we had to cancel the trip, and uh, Lufthansa charged me like $250 just to cancel. And I told my friend about this, and he goes, well, hey man, at least now you have a story. <laughs> I was like, what kind of story do I have? <laughs> like, can you picture me as a grandfather? <laughs> like, uh, gather round, kids. Like, gather round. Uh, your grandpa's gonna tell a story. <laughs> Once upon a time, grandpa bought a plane ticket. <laughs> Then he canceled the plane ticket. <laughs> oh, it cost about $250. <laughs> All right, kids, you go off to bed. <laughs> You've had your story. <laughs> 
Okay, so I want to read something for you guys now. This is a real essay from Benjamin Franklin where he talks about why older women are better than younger women. Uh, from <laughs> So he says, uh, in all your amours, you should prefer old women to young ones. Okay, so he has eight reasons now. This is a full-on analysis here. <laughs> Number one, uh, because they have more knowledge of the world. Their minds are better stored with observation. Their conversation is more improving and lastingly agreeable. They talk about better stuff, you know? I don't, I don't want to hear about Pokemon. <laughs> Two. Uh, when women cease to be handsome, they study to be good. <laughs> to maintain their influence over men, they supply the diminution of beauty by an augmentation of utility. <laughs> <laughs> so th the next time you want to compliment your girlfriend in bed, just be like, have you augmented your utility? <laughs> They learn to do a thousand services, small and great, and are the most tender and useful of all friends when you are sick. Yeah, give you a blowjob and then some Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, uh, there is no hazard of children. There we go. <laughs> I, I, I love that he calls it a hazard. <laughs> Four, uh, commerce with them is safer with regard to your reputation. They don't go yapping about town, all right? <laughs> Uh, number five, uh, in every animal that walks upright, the deficiency of the fluids that fill the muscles appears first in the highest part. Okay, so what he's saying is that women age from the head down. <laughs> this guy harnessed electricity, okay? <laughs> first the face grows lank and wrinkled, then the neck, then the breasts and arms, the lower parts continuing to the last as plump as ever. <laughs> <laughs> so that covering all above with a basket <laughs> Listen, this is, this is not just some paper bag, okay? This is classy, this is a hand-woven basket And regarding only what is below the girdle It is impossible of two women to know an old one from a young one Is this true? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put a basket on it. <laughs> Number, <s> <laughs> Number six, uh, the sin is less. Uh, debauching a virgin may be her ruin. Number seven, uh, the compunction is less. Having made a young girl miserable may give you frequent bitter reflections. You're like, oh, fuck, I fucked that young girl. I feel so shitty. <laughs> Oh, why'd I do that? <laughs> Eighth and lastly, they are so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you guys is that I have signed up for cougarlife.com. <laughs> and you guys should too. <laughs> Thank you guys for <laughs>